Hi, welcome to Cardiology and Beyond. I'm Dr. Sonali, an interventional cardiologist from India. Today's video is going to be on the Galliverdin phenomenon, which is an auscultatory phenomenon seen usually in cases of aortic sclerosis or aortic stenosis. Let's mind map today's video. So we're going to be talking about the Galliverdin phenomenon, which falls under clinical examination, auscultation, and specifically the ejection systolic murmur, because the Galliverdin phenomenon is most commonly seen in cases of aortic stenosis or aortic sclerosis. And those lesions are associated with an ejection systolic or a mid-systolic murmur. So I've formulated four questions on the Galliverdin phenomenon to help you with your active recall. So let's start at the beginning. What is the typical character of an aortic stenosis murmur? Now we have already spoken about this murmur in a video called the ejection systolic murmur. This murmur is rough or harsh in nature. It is either ejection systolic, also known as mid-systolic murmur, and it is a crescendo-decrescendo shaped murmur. It occurs with a little gap after the first heart sound. This is in sharp contrast to the pan-systolic or the holosystolic murmur, which begins right at the beginning of the first heart sound and continues right to the end of the second heart sound. Now, this pan-systolic murmur is seen in mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation and in cases of ventricular septal defects. Now, the frequency of an aortic stenosis murmur is mixed. So, it has a mixture of both high as well as low frequency and as a result, it is rough or harsh in quality. Now, the high frequencies is because of a great, greater gradient across the diseased aortic valve and the lower frequencies is because of increased flow across this very diseased aortic valve. Now, where do you auscultate this murmur? Most commonly, it is heard in the right second intercostal space, but it can also be heard over the left sternal border and also the apex. So in contrast to aortic stenosis, what is aortic sclerosis? Now, aortic sclerosis is more common than you could imagine. It is seen very commonly in older adults, that is more than 65 years of age, almost 20 to 25 percent of this population has aortic sclerosis. So what happens in it? There is essentially fibrous or fibrocalcific thickening of the bases of inherently normal aortic cusps. These aortic cusps move well. There is no gradient across this aortic valve, which is to say that the peak velocity across the aortic valve, which is measured during an echocardiogram, is less than 2.5 meters per second. So if it is more than 2.5 meters per second, that is when pathological aortic stenosis is labeled as such. Now, the murmur of aortic sclerosis can be produced, which is known as the aortic systolic murmur in older adults, and it is quite similar to the murmur that you get in a pathological aortic stenosis. It's either a mid-systolic or we also call it as the ejection systolic murmur. Now, what happens is when the thickening, which is initially present at the base of the aortic cusps, when it starts extending to the free edge of the valve cusps without any commissural fusion, then the gradient across that aortic valve starts increasing and that's when we start getting aortic stenosis. That's when the velocity across the valve becomes more than 2.5 meters per second. So this is what is demonstrated here. This is one of the aortic cusps, one of the aortic cusp which is thin and initially it starts thickening at its base. Then fibrocalcific tissue starts depos uh, causes deposition at the base and when it becomes very severe, it goes right up to the free edge of this valve. This is when aortic stenosis can also occur. But this does not mean that every case of aortic sclerosis has to lead to aortic stenosis. Only some percentage of cases lead to pathological aortic stenosis, which can become severe in a few people. So clinically, how is aortic sclerosis different from aortic stenosis? So essentially, we can look at aortic sclerosis to be a less severe form of degeneration. There is no actual valve obstruction or gradient. 
the murmur that we hear in aortic sclerosis is less than 4 by 6 in intensity. So there's usually no thrill associated with it. The presence of a thrill usually means that the aortic stenosis is present with some amount of gradient across the diseased aortic valve. The murmur of aortic sclerosis peaks in the first half of systole and since the gradient is not much, the peak velocity as I have mentioned before is less than 2.5 meters per second. The second heart sound, specifically the A2 sound is preserved. It is not soft as what is seen with severe aortic stenosis. Also, carotids have a brisk upstroke. That means there is no slow rising or a late peaking pulse which is seen with actual aortic stenosis. Also, the left ventricular apex is normal. It is not sustained and neither do we get any palpable S4 sound. So here's an echocardiographic loop of a aortic valve which is sclerosed. So here you can see this is the short axis view in which these are the three valve cusps. And here you can see a large nodule which is there at the base of this cusp. And this is actually a calcific nodule which is seen in aortic sclerosis. Remember it's either fibrous or a fibrocalcific deposition. And overall the opening of this valve seems to be okay. So this is a classical picture of aortic sclerosis. So finally, what is Galliverdin phenomenon or it's also known as Galliverdin dissociation? So it's essentially it is seen in aortic sclerosis or aortic stenosis. But there are two murmurs which are heard which leads to the phenomenon of Galliverdin dissociation. The word dissociation means that there are two different types of murmurs arising from the same pathology. So you get one kind of murmur in the right second intercostal space. The sound or the murmur originates within the aortic root and there's a lot of turbulence within the aortic root because of the sclerosed aortic valve or a stenosed aortic valve. So that gives rise to a mid-systolic murmur which is heard in the right second intercostal space but it is harsh. It is of mixed frequency, which is to say it is an impure frequency murmur. So here it is impure harsh murmur seen on the right second intercostal space. On the other hand, at the LV apex, you can get a murmur which originates from the periodic vibrations of the stiffened bases of the aortic cusps. Remember, this is what happens initially in aortic sclerosis and if it's severe enough, it can give rise to aortic stenosis. So in both conditions, you can get a sound which originates from the stiffened bases and that gets transmitted to the LV apex preferentially. And the sound which gets transmitted is again mid-systolic but it is high frequency. It is musical and it is pure. So a high frequency, pure, musical, mid-systolic murmur is heard at the apex. So when you get these two kinds of murmurs, at two different areas which arise from a single pathology. This is known as Galliverdin phenomenon or Galliverdin dissociation. So finally, can aortic stenosis or aortic sclerosis murmur be heard only at the apex instead of its classical position at the base of the heart in the second intercostal space? Yes, and the answer is because of this Galliverdin dissociation. And when you hear it only at the apex, this murmur starts mimicking the mitral regurgitation murmur. Of course, unlike MR, this murmur will not have any radiation to the axilla. I'd like to make one more point that this Galliverdin dissociation is seen in degenerative diseases of the aortic valve, which is to say degenerative fibrocalcification of the aortic valve. We do not generally get this dissociation in rheumatic heart disease which affects the aortic valve because in rheumatic heart disease there is commissural fusion and complete fusion of all the elements of the valve which contribute to the periodic vibration of the valve apparatus. So as always, like, share, subscribe, comment and press the bell icon and I'll see you next time with another video.